Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Roamer, which is the SUV version of the D Series truck, which I use quite frequently in my videos. There are five versions of it, the first of which is the i6 rear wheel drive version, and that's the one I'm going to use for now. And I'm not actually going to do much driving with it because it is terribly slow. Instead, I'm going to compare it to the i6 rear wheel drive version of the D Series truck, and you'll be able to see just how different these vehicles actually are. You would think, you know, it'd be pretty similar because all you're doing is you're taking the truck, you're throwing a roof on it, and you're uh, throwing some seats in the back, and you made yourself an SUV, right? But you'd be wrong. They are very different, and if you look at them from this angle, for example, you wouldn't even know that the underside of this vehicle is identical between the two. Like, the engine, transmission, suspension, frame, all of that is the same but between these two, but the bodies are totally different. It's not just taking the D-Series truck and then throwing it back on it. It's like a whole new design. And it's not just the front either, like the hood, that's a different design on the hood. You can tell by the corners right there. This one has no gap. That one has a big gap. And then even this part where you thought maybe this is the same. You can tell it's different because the Roamer slopes into it more gradually where the D-Series truck is a very sharp angle in comparison. So that means not even the cabin shape was kept. That's like a new shape right there. And then the door angle is also new. It's like, I mean, the door is also new because it's a different angle right here. So that has to be new. And really... The only things I can find that's shared between these two vehicles is the tail hitch, the tailgate shape, which appears to be the same between the two, and the mirrors. Aside from that, though, it's pretty much nothing's the same, which also unfortunately means most parts are not interchangeable. Like, you can't do something crazy where you change out certain parts with the others. The only things you can really change out are the bumpers. But even the lights, for example, I don't know if you noticed this, you might say, oh, the lights are the same, but they're not. This one has a tiny square. This one has a rectangle. There are just a ton of differences on the exterior. And the same on it's the same on the interior also. So let's go ahead and look at that. There's the truck, and then I gotta get the SUV too. And if we go back and forth between the D series and the Roamer, you will notice that the Roamer has an entirely new interior design that seems to have no relationship whatsoever to the interior in the D series truck, which means there's really nothing I can compare between the two. So instead, we're just gonna look at the interior of this one which uh, seems to be pretty nice. It has a steering wheel that looks like it would have an airbag, but it doesn't. It deceives you. But of course, the steering wheel will steer when you tell it to steer. It looks crazy like that. It looks cool. And then parking brake. There's no lever the, as far as I can tell over here. It might have a release down here where I can't see a foot release, but it does have a light for when your parking brake is on. And then if you use the headlights, you can light everything up in, gr in uh, not green. Why did I almost say green? Yellowish orange. And you click it again. You got high beams. You got a little light for that. And then the blinkers, the little lever on the column does move. So all the little details are there and functional. And if you try to look behind you to the rear, you'll see only one row of seats. And that's all there is. There's two bucket seats in the, bucket seats in the front and one bench seat behind you. And, well, that's the interior. It's kind of very, very brown. Uh, like, it just feels like it needs contrast. But, like, honestly, if you look at pictures for SUVs in, like, the 90s and stuff... Uh, that's kind of what they look like. Very, very little contrast. Kind of ugly, but true to what it should look like. Performance-wise, the SUV is basically a slower version of the truck because it weighs a couple hundred pounds more with all the extra things that SUVs have. For example, if we were to do a drag race right here between the two, the truck will easily outrun the SUV. However, the SUV does have a little bit better of a weight distribution where it is closer to 50-50. It's not 50-50, but it's closer. The truck has a lot of weight in the front, where the SUV is getting closer to having a perfect 50-50 weight balance, which is always good for driving dynamics and stuff. But you have an SUV. That's not exactly the first word that comes to mind for your average SUV owner. It's, how many people can I fit? And how safe is it when I slam into the people in the Priuses? That's usually the first train of thought. And there's a very weak crash. Because the last crash sucked so much, I'm going to make sure this one is good by doing a nice simple one which can't be screwed up, like crashing into that at about 55 miles per hour or so. That was the outcome, and that seems to look uh, pretty good. I noticed no major issues there. I would even say that this one might crash a little bit better than the 200BX, which is a vehicle that just recently came out when this vehicle came out. And they're both made by the actual people who make BMG Drive. And I just noticed less glitchiness with this vehicle no matter what I do, where the 200BX, it seems like I get glitchiness a little more often when I'm doing crazy extreme things. Of course, they both usually get glitchy doing crazy extreme things, because that's kind of normal, because it's just I'm doing crazy things. And uh, that right there looks crazy. Let's crash the roof some more. 
And I want to point out that they removed the little piece over here. Or maybe that was a... No, I don't know when they removed it, to be honest. But there used to be a thing here you could use to crush your roof. It's gone now. Now I got to use the ramps or, or the... Not ramps. These loop-de-loops to uh, crush my roof, which makes me sad. What I really should do is just get a faster version of the, the uh, SUV, though. As I said, this is the i6 rear-wheel drive, which is terribly slow. It takes like 10 seconds to get up to freeway speed, which is like a safety hazard almost to me. It's so slow. So I want to kill it, and then I have an excuse to spawn up a new one. Okay, you gotta die. I mean, it is pretty much a little... I, actually, I was gonna say as durable as the D-Series, but I think it's even more durable than the D-Series because it just has a heavier and stronger body on it. So it just makes it even stronger. Which means this is probably the strongest uh, stock vehicle there is now. Because, well, now, I, I mean, the T-Series is bigger and heavier, but I wouldn't say it's as strong and as durable as this one. I have no idea where I'm going, by the way. I'm just kind of not having much decisions on which way to go because it's so damaged. Apparently, though, it just keeps wanting to, it's just, you know what, I'm going to make sure this thing isn't going to drive no more. Because it just keeps wanting to go and go and go and go. I want you to die so I can spawn up a new one. Suspension test, I'm not going to bother with because the same as the D-Series pretty much. The extra weight doesn't seem to make a difference there. Just thought of it since I went over it. And there's the final crash that killed the car. That roof really looks a little crazy from that. Just got totally smashed. But I think that's okay looking. Like, it's not unrealistic. So, reset him. And we'll make it a much faster version. We'll use the V8 off-road one, which is basically the same as the V8 off-road truck but with the extra weight of an SUV again. When you use the off-road version, you can feel the fact that this is more top-heavy than the truck pretty easily, though. For example, if I go steering full to the right, accelerate, go about 180 degrees of rotation, and then go to the left, I will tip the truck and flip it over. If I do the same thing with an off-road version of the truck, that's not the outcome. And I think I pointed to the wrong truck before. This is the one that it's the same as. Anyways, if I do the exact same thing, like this and then steering hard to the right you'll notice that the truck didn't look like it was going to tip it looked strong and steady because the SUV has all that extra weight up top and then you have a raised suspension you really notice the fact that that thing wants to tip over on you if you do crazy things but on the uh, stock or, or the other versions of the, stock, the vehicle I don't notice it as much like I really only notice it on the off-road one because of the extra height of the suspension and there's an actual good look at the strength of the roof instead of just obliterating it. And it is pretty strong, which would be expected, but it's not overly strong because you can destroy it like you saw me do earlier. Or if I get a really big jump and land on my roof, that'll probably destroy it as well. Something like, uh, almost like that. It got the back end pretty destroyed up. And it lives! This is one durable SUV. I mean... It, it is more durable than the truck. It's that simple. The extra weight and strength and all that makes it more durable than the truck, which is awesome. I know I've said that twice. I don't care. I think I said it twice at least. All right. It still wants to drive, but it's upside down, huh? You want to drive? I'll allow it. Where's my truck? I'm going to push you upright. You get to drive because you're so durable. I slammed into that thing's roof. I don't know if it'll be able to survive that. Oh, it still wants to drive, but it rolled over before I could, like, switch vehicles and stuff. Alright, I'm over. I'm gonna slam you again, and then I expect you to still be able to drive. And then I wanna see you do something. That roof is totally caved in, though, from these hits. Aww. Tip over. I mean, of course, I could always just teleport it and do some weird maneuvering to tip it over too, but this one's more fun, because I get damage in the roof. Upright! Upright! Okay. Perfect. And it still drives. That is one durable vehicle. I think the off-road version is even more durable than the, uh, the normal one, just like the truck. All the off-road parts, which are stronger, makes one strong vehicle. It's fun to drive it. Because, like, even with all this damage, it still drives pretty straight. It's not perfect. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that might kill it. Ha! You wish it would kill it. 
This thing really is crazy good. Oh, uh, come on, the roof's so crushed in, you would think it'd be less top heavy. I, I don't know if I could actually tip it on this one by crashing into it, but maybe that'll finally kill it. Aw, uh, bad angle. Why'd I have to crash there? Why couldn't I have crashed somewhere more convenient? Mm, upright, upright, upright. Nope. Not gonna happen like that. I need to do some teleportation. You still function? Aw. Oh. It still does function. Just not the front wheels, it looks like. Or at least that wheel, the one I was looking at. You are good. Don't worry. We're gonna keep you driving. Just let me tip you upright. Upright, come on, come on. Yes! Lives! Still! Somehow! This is amazing. There goes the bumper. Like you were doing any good. It's a lot more than a bump, you. This is a collision. We're gonna crash into this now! That has to kill it. No way! Just the unkillable vehicle here. Like, I want to see this thing die, but it just won't. It's like, no, I, I am unkillable. You do not kill me. I think I got a new favorite vehicle right here, though. Like, you should be broken. But it's like, no, I don't care. I will not break. All right, come on. We're going to do a jump, and then I want you to be broken. That's not even a jump. Okay, that, that kills it. That was like a 70-something mile per hour crash, I think. I wasn't looking at the speedometer, but it felt pretty fast. Are you kidding me? Oh, I thought I saw that wheels moving. That is officially dead. That's what it takes to kill a roamer. That is impressive. All right, that's enough of the really crazy crashes now because in real life, nobody's gonna have a vehicle that is falling apart that badly and still try driving it. In real life, you would have crashes like this one where you have a vehicle that's driving along on the highway, for example, this car, and then they have to come to a stop because suddenly there's traffic. Then you have the idiot behind him who's eating takeout while he talks on his phone, not paying attention to, at all to the road, and he also happens to be speeding a little bit, who slams into him at about 85 miles per hour or so. And that is the outcome. So let's see how the people in the uh, white truck that got rear-ended held up first, and then I'll look at the red one. I'm trying to separate the vehicles first, but they don't appear to want to separate until I tear off the door. So that, just remember that door was only torn off because of me. So, people in this vehicle, they actually are totally safe from injuries, it looks like, caused from, like, the actual vehicle. The only injuries they may have is just from the force of the impact. There's no, like, metal or anything that they would get crushed by. They're totally fine. Even the people back here, if you had third row seating, they'd be hurting. But it looks pretty much fine in terms of actually where the drivers would be. Red car, on the other hand, uh, let's see here. You'd probably have some some injuries from the from over here, possibly from the door, but most of it would again just be the uh, force of the impact that would cause the injuries. Pretty strong vehicles, man. They are pretty strong. Now for another comparison point, what if we did the same thing to a much smaller vehicle, like this one? Actually, I probably shouldn't use that one because it has a roll cage, and real cars on the streets usually don't have a roll cage. So I'm gonna switch to the one with the roll cage, put the brake on. And we're going to hit him at about the same speed. And you'll see, hopefully, a difference in how damaged the car gets. Like in rear-ending another roamer, they would survive. Hitting the Covet, ooh, that doesn't look like survivable at all. Look, look at the damage to my car. There's barely any damage on this thing. It's built so ridiculously strong. Covet, on the other hand, that's probably death, not only from impact, but from the roof crushing your head. That is a huge difference between the two. Alright, so for another fun thing, what if we ram this thing with a Covet at highway speed? I mean, it probably will have barely any damage, I'm thinking, after seeing how well it held up uh, rear-ending him. So I'll just park him right about there. Back up the Covet a bunch. I want it to hit at about normal freeway speeds. Let's say the guy in the Covet is a more responsible driver. Instead of speeding, texting, and eating, he is just texting and eating, so he didn't notice that the car in front of him came to a stop suddenly. And he ends up crashing into him. He's also in the slow lane, maybe, because I don't think I'm going to get up to speed. So let's say he was trying to slow down, but couldn't. Ha <laughs> ha! The COVID is, like, totally ruined. And then 
you got the roamer over here. I was like, was that a crash? I think somebody rear-ended me. My bumper slightly tilted. Oh, and then the looks like the uh, the tailgate's also slightly misaligned, or the trunk, or whatever you want to call it, is slightly misaligned as well. But the difference in damage was crazy. I had to reset the COVID, unfortunately, to separate them. But you did see what it looked like looked like earlier, and huge difference. Like if I saw this, I would not know it was involved in a 50-ish mile per hour impact just recently. I would never expect that. So I'm gonna do that again at a higher speed just to see. I'm gonna bring this one all the way up to actual highway speeds and then some. So it's again the irresponsible person who's speeding. If I can get it up to that speed, it doesn't have the best of acceleration. Alright, so we're gonna do reset right here. And whatever speed I get is the speed I'll use. Make sure parking brake is on. It was not, now it is. And by the way, when I switch off between the cars like that, the vehicle is still accelerating. Uh, as long as you're holding the accelerator when you hit tab to switch vehicles, it keeps accelerating. It's a nice convenience. So here's a 75-ish mile per hour crash into the rear of this thing. And let's see how it holds up. That's ridiculous. That thing is so strong. I think it looks less damaged than 75 miles per hour than... What? That don't even make sense. Alright, I'm gonna move, uh the COVID out of the way where I could see it because I want to see the damage on it for that. Okay, COVID, the drivers are possibly having some head injuries from the roof caving in depending on how tall they are. If they're short, they might be okay. So that's terrible pain for them. And then, of course, there's the G's. People in this one is like, I think I got hit. <laughs> Again, so little damage. You got your lights popped out and then you can maybe replace the uh, the hatch tailgate thing and the bumper but the actual vehicle itself it's like yeah this is straight oh uh, wait how's the underside look no it looks fine like that is just so durable i don't know what happened there though that's a little funky i guess they managed to somehow push the vehicle okay so there's a little bit of frame damage it's not like oh i just gotta replace these and it's good to go there's some damage to it all right since i am on the topic of crashing into this what about if we ram it at an angle like that Oh, wrong button. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry about that. Okay. Got to move my COVID back. Back, back way over there. Because I want to hit it about. Let's, uh, let's, let's ramp it up gradually. So we'll start at about 50 miles per hour. So let's say they're on a normal road. The idiot in the uh, giant SUV pulls out. Oh, I don't see you there. And this guy happens to be speeding a little bit. And then this would be the outcome. Also, I love using the off-road version for this because the front of this car kind of fits under it. So that was a pretty high-speed collision. I mean, looking at the damage of the Kova, it again looks like it went got a lot worse than the SUV, which just has its doors pushed in a little bit. Like, that would have kept the driver perfectly intact. The doors didn't cave in or anything. So that means time to ramp it up. I love that this car you could drive with the parking brake on. Like, I don't even care that there's a parking brake. I'm going to drive anyways. Alright. Of course, if you do that with a car in real life, you'll be really sad and you'll smell brake everywhere. Or, well, I mean, I guess it's just called the smell of brake, right? I don't know. Anyways, this is a high-speed crash, so let's say he pulls onto the freeway and then, he, I don't know why he's doing this, but he pulls onto the freeway at an angle like this, and the poor innocent guy in the COVID is driving at about freeway speeds and then he ends up hitting him. Okay, a little bit faster than freeway speeds, but it's well within the loft. The speed limit 65 miles per hour. 67 mile per hour collision. Pretty much totaling this car it looks like. At least I would say that looks like it'd be totaled. Truck itself, there's some actual damage to it. It took that much speed to actually cave in the doors enough where it would actually hurt the driver from the caving in and not just the impact. But that is a huge impact to cause that. You need so much force, it's crazy. Speaking of so much force, let's use an SUV to hit my SUV. Where is there? I was looking for the SUV. I'm like, where's the Roamer? Where's the Roamer? It's like, wait, no. I don't want the Roamer. I want the D-Series, which has it. Kind of interesting that, that, that it's set up like this. It's the only one I know of that really has a totally different body style on it like that. I think it's cool. I think it's real cool that it does that. Boom. See, when you have these two vehicles, it's more of a fair fight. 
Like, it's not just one obliterating the other. So this driver, we've seen something like this before. He should be totally fine from anything caving in on him. Maybe, except for the door a little bit. And it seems to be the same this time. For this guy, he is severely injured from that door caving in. And everything in here is a little screwy. At least the dash, it looks a little crazy. Can it drive though? Yes, it can! It doesn't go straight, but it can still drive. So that's a, a good idea of how stupid strong this car is. It is one durable thing. Alright, so I think uh, for this, we'll just use the off-road version. Just keeping it simple and having the most durable one go down the route. The route. And since it's off-road, maybe it'll even just drive down it. Yeah, that's totally possible. I'm going to drive down this thing. Yeah, right. It may be durable on a car-to-car -car collision, but the weight doesn't help it on something like this because when it does hit something, it's now, you know, 4,000 pounds of metal hitting it, which is not good for its health. Going down a cliff doesn't hold up any better than any other vehicle, really. Like, most vehicles end up looking something like that going down this place. Grab it with the stone. Grab it. Grab it. Here's the dumb question. Would it have driven? No. It didn't look like it would have. Oh yeah, I forgot. The interiors are a lot clearer when you're in the uh, underwater. I forget about that. It's one of those things I forgot to do. Oh well. I always forget about that. But yeah, there's your look at the interior where it's clearer. And for some variety, how about this? We're going to try to go down the cliff in interior view. I don't know how this is going to work out, to be honest. I think I'm going down it. I mean, there's definitely movement, but I don't seem to get much damage. There's some damage. Yeah, I really have no idea what's going on, to be honest. I could try to look behind me, and well, that doesn't do much. Just keep my view straight and hope for the best. I know I'm upside down half the time, but then other half the time I'm right side up. It's very confusing. Looks like the roof is caved in some. Finally. It feels longer when you're on the inside. I don't know why. This is like, I'm still crashing? Really? Alright, we're on the sand, so I'm gonna... It didn't look that damaged from the inside, to be honest. Like, from the inside, it's like, oh, okay, there's some damage. But the dash looks like it's intact. And then you got the outside, it's just like, whoa, that's destroyed. I didn't expect that. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is let's, uh... Kind of just keep to tradition here. It's like one of those things where it's like, you know, these things work out as a tradition where it's like, I always do this, so we're going to do it. The descent now. Another fun thing you can do with this car is mess with the bumpers. So, for example, right now we have the Romer off-road bumpers. But if we wanted to, we could put on the D-Series normal bumpers on the front and back, which is fun to do. because It just looks kind of unusual. Uh, there we go. So now it just has a kind of unusual look to it. Like it has the bumpers from one, but the body from the other. And that's something fun you can do. You could also do the same to the truck. You could put the fancy looking uh, Romer bumpers on it. And then you also have the off-road versus not off-road. So you can say, I want the D-Series off-road ones, which is, again, kind of weird. But you could do that if you want. That one actually matches up pretty good. Much better. I think it's just the whole off-road version needs off-road parts. But aside from that, there's nothing you could really interchange. Because everything else is listed under the, um, which one is it? This one, the D-Series body. And everything here is under Romer body, which means all of these are Romer exclusive parts. None of these are actually parts that are compatible with the D-Series. You can't switch any of those out. You can add a trailer if you wanted to, though, so I could go and say, Add a trailer, yes, please. And then you have a trailer you could tow along. Like so. And it, can, it has no problem towing a little trailer like this, except for the fact that the trailer fell off because I was doing a jump. But all the suspension bits, as you see, are just the normal ones you get in the D-Series. Like here, it's just the D-Series live rear axle setup. Nothing changed there. The engine is a D, the D-Series 4.5 liter V8 with a stage 2 tune. Like all of these are just D-Series parts under the body. Which is what I've been saying this whole time. That's the proof of it. So I think that's all I want to do here. Let's go ahead and head to the cliff and drop the car from there. For this one, let's go ahead and use the Sheriff version, which is just a slightly detuned off-road version, basically. It has a little less horsepower, but to make up for that, you get stickers that say Sheriff Emergency 911, and you also get a light bar on top that flashes lights. 
doesn't really make up for that. So let's say though, you're chasing a criminal, and then you drop your donut. And then you look up, and the next thing you know, this is happening. You're gonna get fired. But, we'll see how the outcome of this ends up going. I'm trying to steer it to the left, so it hopefully will stay on this all the way down. Looks like it's gonna make it. And I actually haven't used a lot of the variations, and I do apologize about that. Luckily for this one, the only real difference is the stickers and the light bar. The engine tuning, it's just like, it's slower. That's really all there is to say about it. And the suspension and all that, I believe, is the same as the off-road one. I could double check it, but I'm 90% certain, so I'm going with my gut. And there's the outcome. The driver's compartment kind of held up. That's surprising. All right. Next, we're going to use this one, which is kind of like the i6 rear-wheel drive version with a differential added to allow it to uh, have all-wheel drive and a bigger engine, but not that big of an engine. Like, this one's no tuning on it where the off-road has a stage 2 tuning on it. And then the XD, which is the other one I haven't used yet, has a stage 1 tuning. And then I believe it also has a, a limited slip differential where this one does not. And I think uh, that is the change between those two. And I've now I've finally said what the difference is between all the different versions. And doing it right now and all I do, I'm doing is watching a crash is a pretty good way of doing it. Because normally, under something like this, I don't know what to say. It's just like, yep, the car crashed. Did you guys see that? Oh my god, I crashed. It's like... You know, that's not very helpful. But if I tell you the information while I'm crashing, that's kind of useful. Uh, anyways, the next thing we're going to do is go down Leap of Death. And I always have trouble finding Leap of Death for some reason. Like, I don't know why. There it is. And just to be fair, I'm going to now use the XT version of it so that we have now destroyed every version of the roamer that is available. And for something like this, it doesn't matter which one we use because it'll be destroyed no matter what. At least it should be. Like, I'd be really surprised if any vehicle holds up here, because usually, they don't. Unless it's something really unusual, like a ball or plane or something. Those, they sometimes have a chance. Right here, though, this don't look pretty. Driver is crushed, also killed from G's. Passengers are crushed, also killed from G's. Like, that's just death. That is death. Rear end's holding up, though. Like, oh yeah, that's the back of a vehicle. Now it's not kind of, no, I could kind of still say that's the rear end of a vehicle. Although it doesn't look like it's at the rear of the vehicle. It kind of looks like it's in the middle almost. Funny how much the rear end is actually held up until that crash. Like compared to the front, which just had that straight impact that destroyed it. And there is the end of that. Pretty destroyed. Next one is a Brutal Slope. So let's go ahead and make our way to there. So we'll start off by making a convertible roamer because I've always wanted a convertible SUV. Who doesn't? And I'll use the off-road edition because I'm pretty sure the strength and suspension will give it a more likely of a chance to actually drive, even though it does sit higher. It's one of those things where it's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think you probably want to use the lower one so it will have more chance to survive. But it's going to compress anyway, so I'm pretty sure the more durable the suspension is, the better your odds are. And for a second there, I'm like, oh my goodness, we're going 260 miles per hour. And I'm like, wait, it's kilometers per hour. How did that happen? Ah, there we go. Should be about 200. That's what most cars hit for this. And then, slow-mo on. Convertible. Enabled. All right, suspension hold up hold up it held up I might still be able to drive it I'm not sure I gotta stop it first though that is the first goal here all right car is stopped interior camera is kind of usable and can we drive it yes we can and that is one nice looking vehicle almost looks more like a chop top than a, conver a convertible on this one it looks cool though like, if it wasn't for the fact that everything's bent and destroyed, just that roof line looks really cool. It looks like a really crazy chop top. Alright. Finish things up. We'll now just slam into a wall. Oh, but first, there's another thing I should do. Whee! There are all the parts. Nothing uh, too interesting about it. You got the stuff you'd expect to fall off falling off. Alright, there we go. I just wanted to do that real quick. Now we can go ahead and crash into the wall, and uh, that'll be the end of the video. Full speed, full speed, full speed, go, go, go. 
And I know you could probably just like hold the clutch in and then you'll go just as fast like this. But it doesn't really matter. It seems like I did some testing before and it's like it's like a couple of miles per hour different. So I was like, yeah, we're going to hit about 200 again. Like the bigger difference is just trying to go straight the whole time. If you can do that, you'll hit a good speed no matter what. It's like, oh, we got 210 versus 205, I think, or something. Not a big difference. Anyways, collision. Car will not survive. Impossible to do so. It looks like he's smiling. Like, yeah, I'm crashing. No, that should be sad. You should be like, oh, no, I'm crashing. That is impressive, though. Like, that rear section, you can still tell what it is. The front, I don't know what it is. What is that? Is that a car? No. Yeah, it actually was. It actually kind of looks like if you have the right angle on it to make it look a little deceptive, it looks like, all right, you got to just bear with me here. It is an 18-wheeler, and this is the front of it. That's the headlight. That's the place where the driver would be. He would be sitting right here. And that's the wheel for it. And it's just the wheels kind of misplaced. I swear I'm just seeing 18 wheeler here. Tell me if you do. Uh, anyways, till next time, this is YBR. I'll see.